I keep discovering that my reliance on free grace is less than total. Is there hope for me? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. We love playing the looking at my behavior, and it just sucks. It does. Uh, it's real. Um, uh, it's, this is, we, we run this fine line, and we keep talking about this, of, of license, uh, trying, trying not to fall into license in the freedom that we're given, but, you know, um, trusting that, that Christ and his sacrifice is sufficient. Uh-huh. And then I go screw everything up. <laughs> we all do. My behavior is horrible. Yeah. Any yeah. number of ways I'm selfish and I'm <clears throat> saying the wrong things and I'm doing the wrong things. Yep. And it's horrible. I'm, seriously. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. It's yeah. legitimate. It's true of all of us, believers. And the background is what we've looked at before, the end of Romans 7. Paul found himself in that same position. Don't believe somebody who says those words had to have been written by somebody before they were a Christian. Paul was writing those words at the end of Romans 7. The good that I would do, I do not. <clears throat> Things that I hate, I'm always doing. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Some of the best words ever written. <clears throat> and he wrote it as a Christian believer. Uh, evangelicals have an awful time with that and will try to say that Paul wrote that before he was a believer. He didn't. He wrote it as a, as a believer. Well, that's across denominations. We see that sort of struggle with that. <clears throat> yeah. it's, not, it's not any one denomination. Yeah. So uh, this this is to be expected until we die and breathe our last. We are going to be sinners to the very end, and Christ is still greater by his death and resurrection for us. It will still work. It reminds me of a child sitting in front of Jesus, like if you could just have Jesus there in all your stages of life. So uh -huh. You start as a child, and you work your way up, and he's still a child. And you go through the whole thing, and pretty uh -huh. soon you're an old man, and you're still a child, and you're still asking him the same. And you, the whole time, did you die for this too? Did you die for this too? I just sinned again. Did right. you die for this too? Right. Did you die for this too? And you do it the entire arc of your life. Yeah. And I get the sense from God at certain points, you know, like with, uh, was it Abraham? Oh my, this is where I'm going to show, I'm not remembering everything exactly 100%, but going and saying, you know, please don't smite me, Lord, but just one more, one more, uh, you know, one more question. Can I ask? You, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he was, he was uh, negotiating with it, God. It, for the sake of 50, for the sake of he 40, yeah. 10. You know. Yeah. I keep doing that. Is this, is this too much? Is this, is this too much? Yeah. Is this, have, is, was this, even though I've done this, are you, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And, and we do that, and, and we, we would do that. And I think if he was sitting there, we'd finally go, ah, you got to be kidding. That's what we do. The yeah. Jesus that we sort of internalized from what the, you know, the words that we've given and that we read out loud. Yep. The list, this living word, we sit there and argue with it. Yeah. Internally, even just sit there and go, nah, that can't be. I'm too much of a dirt bag. Yeah. There are people, <clears throat> God bless them, who try to believe that and have trouble believing it. The guy who says, he may have died for the sin of the world, but mine is really beyond his reach. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. We've talked about that before. It, some time back, we did. I was. We were doing a thing on quality of sin and quantity of sin. Yeah. We tend to do that with one of the two of those. Right. Yep. Either the quality of sin is so dark. Yep. Either in ourselves or in somebody else that we want to see, we really want to see get punted into yep. the pit. Yep. You know that guy's scum. <laughs> Punt them into the pit. You know, the, we, we will put ourselves in the place of the sons of thunder and call down the hellfire on that mm -hmm. particular whoever. Mm -hmm. um, and like I always say, for me, it's somebody in front of me in, in traffic. That's, that's where I will call down a lot of mine. <laughs> I, you know, I've, try, I've told my kids, don't be like me. Don't drive like me. But the, this, this, this struggle that there's enough for me and I think part of it is like that. We look at our, we look at sinners around us 
And we know in our hearts how we would treat those sinners around us. We have so little patience for people like that. We've got nothing. Yeah. I got nothing. I can't forgive that one. We can't, we struggle sometimes to forgive our children. Yeah. Let alone our neighbor. Yeah. You know, who is like, I always tease the guy in traffic, which is legitimate. Yep. You know, the words that leave my mouth are not, I forgive you for that, sir. Right. (laughs) Ever. Yeah. I don't think that's happened once in my life. It's always the sons of thunder response. Yep. Lord smite him. (laughs) Scum. Get out of my way. You know, and, and that, that, you know, that, that sort of thing. So how can God have that? How can he be okay with me if I am like that all the time? Because of Christ. That's too simple. I ask that question and you always have the same response. <laughs> I can give it to you in Latin. It's propter Christum. Doesn't help, huh? <laughs> but that's nope. why I that's why I hurt for the guy who says my sin is too great and too deep. I don't condemn him. I just wish he didn't have to live like that. And because of the message of the gospel, that he would realize that regardless of the depth of it or the number of it or the whatever, the gospel says, for Christ's sake, you're forgiven. I spoke, I've not, I've not spoken about this on, on camera, but I said it to friends. I spoke to a guy that I consider a friend um, who was in my life for a time while I was going through a phase and I was at a bar and he and I would be at the same bar you know, mm-hmm. periodically. I'm Lutheran. We can do that. And, um, and, uh, we would go through these, you know, theological discussions. I was very different perspective than he was. And I didn't listen sure. to him a lot. And he had some major struggles with feeling like he just needed to do better and, you know, he just didn't feel like a good Christian because he was su- he was struggling this way and that way, and he was just you know. And and we had a big. I remember we had a couple big old conversations that focused on, you know, some of the stories he told me where he was he was witnessing to people and and seeing a visible change in their behavior that night, late at a bar, and you know, somebody was behaving badly, and we'll go into details. And and what he said changed people, the word that he quoted from scripture changed people's behavior in front of him. And I said, you're worried about how you're doing in your walk? I'm not (laughs) doing as well as you are. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you, I, you know, I said, I said this, I think you need to look at this differently, that you need to look at this, this gospel that has been given to you from the mouth of Jesus as like a jacuzzi. You just need to sit and get used to it. What do you do in a jacuzzi? You just sit there and enjoy it. Yep. You don't do a thing. Yep. And I said, you need to kind of just sit and get used to it. And I said, you just, you keep, you're on this cycle and you just are grinding on yourself. And I said, you keep that up. And I said, it's never going to be good enough and you're going to walk. Yeah. And I said, the problem is, is that it is enough. And you just can't believe you're getting yourself to a point of not being able to believe that it's enough. Yep. Anymore. And I said, that's a lie. It is sufficient. Yeah. It is sufficient. And he needs to be in a church where the pastor's saying that in a zillion different ways. But but part of it was if you're looking for your behavior to determine its sufficiency, yep. this you're this is why it's gonna fail finally, because you're putting it on yourself. Yep. So so when you when you put it on yourself, when your behavior, eventually you get to the the break point where you just can't do this anymore. Yep. And I, it seemed, I think well, that it, kind of made sense, but, but I was, I, it looked to me like I was watching the struggle in sure, front of me sure. of my behavior just is, is not enough. I need to do more of the behavior. Yes. And I'm like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hard to hear, but it's utterly true. And God bless you for trying to get it across to him. So that he could relax in Christ. <clears throat> Keep doing what you're doing. It's a good thing. But you're getting to where you you got an opportunity to see all you've got is Christ and his death and his resurrection for you. That's all any of us has. 
I didn't want, yeah, to what you were just saying, I didn't want him to stop the good words of that course. were leaving his mouth. Of course. I'm like, but you need to do it in freedom, not in tyranny. Yep. You're doing it not in it. tyranny because it's never enough. Yep. Because if Jesus isn't enough, then there is no other that's enough. Right. That's right. It's either Jesus is enough or it's a fail. Yep. There's no, that's it. That's, those are the paradigms. Yep. Jesus is enough. And we sinners struggle to believe that Jesus is enough. Yep. So therefore we keep striving with the goal of improving on what Jesus did because it wasn't enough. Yep. That's what it amounts to. And it was kind of fun that you kind of sit there over beer and be like, just, okay, stop. We always fall back to our, us and our friends always, you know, or we and our friends always go back to the Bob Newhart show. Just stop. Stop it. <laughs> Bob Newhart, stop your bad behavior. <laughs> So, so at least you could not be, you know, levity helps drive, you know, drive home the point because sure. what's, what's the point of the levity at, and why do you come to the bar in the first place? Sure. Because you need these things off of you for a time. Yep. You need to relax for a time. You need this, this, you need, and, and he wouldn't see it this way, but it's like, you need your brethren to sort of absolve you. Sort yeah. of. It's not an actual absolution, yep. but it's kind of an absolution and yeah. it's, and, and you feel like, okay. Okay. And then it's and then it's possible. So um yeah, it's a little different. This is uh you know, we've seen the struggle and we've you know, we, we interact with people in more than ways than one. And uh this was this was a big deal back then. I don't know where he is now. I'd love to see him again. I miss that guy. Yeah. But uh we're all struggling with this. We are all Saint Paul. At our best. Yeah. Well, there are some who are better, I think, that they think they're better. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not better than St. Paul. I look up to St. Paul. I'm so thankful for the words of St. Paul because Romans 7 it describes my life. It describes my life in the Christian faith. It's descriptive of it perfectly. Yep. The good that I want to do, I don't do. And the, and the thing I hate is what I keep doing. Yep. That is the Christian life. And we want to think that somehow we're going to get some sort of reflection off of our life that says, you're okay, Christian. Yeah. And it never comes. Not really. As soon as I think it's coming, oh, but wait, now I've just done the thing again. <laughs> I've, I've stumbled this way and I've stumbled that way. And I'm sitting here going, God, how can you love me? I suck. I am scum. I am just a beggar. I am, I am every bit the 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 son who runs up to the father and just feel or you know kind of well begrudgingly comes to the father and is just trying to come up with a an explanation so you can sit at the outer edge and just be scum yeah and somehow prodigal still, prodigal son just be, be <clears throat> yeah. on the edge of the thing yeah they kept that vague on you know, for a reason but yeah every bit that every bit that because some part of me is just like I can't ask for grace again I just I've I've already used it all up yeah. Come to 1517.org for more, and we'll see you on social media. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more. And please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it. <laughs>